What's up, I'm Jeff Haynes from Tech Bargains, and this is the video review of the Dell Inspiron 14 laptop. One of the big tricks that comes with selling laptops is balancing the cost of the machine with the addition of new features. Frequently, if a new laptop is being sold at a low price, it means that the manufacturer has held back some features for mid-range and high-end laptops. But Dell believes that it can deliver a powerful machine like the Inspiron 14 with a lot of features that consumers want at an affordable price. So just how well did the Inspiron 14 perform? Here's our review. The Inspiron 14 that we reviewed was powered by a fourth generation Intel Core i5 4200U processor running at 1.6 GHz that could be boosted up to 2.6 GHz via turbo. It came with 6 GB of RAM and was supplemented by Intel HD Graphics 4400. It came with a 500GB hard drive spinning at 5400 RPM, and it displayed content on a 14-inch LED backlit touch display with a native resolution of 1920 by 1080 at 300 nits. It also packed two USB 3.0 ports, one of which was a PowerShare port. Rounding out the system was Bluetooth 4.0, full Wi-Fi support, Waves Max Audio Pro speakers, HDMI out, and a multi-card reader slot. The first thing that stands out with the Inspiron 14 is the slick design of the system. The chassis of the machine is built out of forged aluminum with chrome accents around the keyboard, bottom plank, and the trackpad. This is definitely not what you'd expect out of the Inspiron line, which just highlights how much attention has been paid to the computer. The effect of the two silver tones and the large black bezel adds a touch of class to the system. In fact, simply putting the computer on our desk was enough to make passers-by in the office stop and ask what kind of machine it was. The backlit keyboard is nicely centered in the bottom of the plank. Keystrokes are nice and have quiet, responsive action. The trackpad is large and very responsive as well, particularly when it comes to Windows 8 gestures. The overall effect makes the computer look like you've paid hundreds of dollars more than you actually would at Dell's online store. Another thing that's notable about the Inspiron 14 is just how light and thin the system happens to be, especially when you take into consideration the construction of the laptop. It's only 0.6 inches thick, which is actually thinner than a Retina MacBook Pro. It also weighs about 4.4 pounds. It's a bit on the heavy side if you're looking at Ultrabooks, but given the fact that it's built out of aluminum and demonstrates absolutely no flexing, even if you hold it by its corners, the weight can be overlooked. Apart from the construction, we also found that the Inspiron was virtually silent during use. We never heard the laptop get noisy, even when we put it under significant load. Additionally, we noticed that the computer stayed very cool as well, regardless of the length of time we ran it or the strain it was under. Considering the limited space within the tiny chassis, as well as the machine built out of metal, we were concerned that this could have turned into a hot plate, especially if it remained on our lap. Fortunately, it barely even seemed to get warm, which is a huge selling point for the laptop. We were also pleased with the performance of the Inspiron 14, which was as strong as expected. A large amount of this could be attributed to the i5 Haswell processor, which provided stability behind the scenes when we were running apps or multitasking. Regardless of what we ran on the system, we didn't pick up on major slowdown or any significant lag. Multitasking wasn't a problem, image processing was easy, and watching loads of videos was very easy to do. Finally, we found that the Corning Gorilla Glass display was really great when it came to displaying still shots. We knew that the screen would be durable thanks to the Gorilla Glass, but with the 300 nit brightness of the touchscreen, we could really enjoy shots in HD video. Videos in particular popped when it came to the screen, displaying rich blacks and vivid colors. However, as we started to work with the system more, we found some issues that arose from the Inspiron 14. To start with, there were visual problems that we had with the display. Angles were pretty bad, even though it was designed to be better than regular panels. We found lots of color shifting and screen darkening from the sides or looking down at the screen from above. However, this wasn't fully solved by just looking head on at the display either. Thanks to the glossy nature of the screen, you would have to really adjust the angle of the laptop and your light source to ensure that you could accurately see content. The only way to truly combat this issue was to keep the laptop plugged in, which pumped up the brightness significantly to take advantage of the 300 nits of brightness. Another issue we had was related to the sound, which wasn't particularly full or rich. While the speakers come with Waves Max Audio Pro, we cranked it up completely, but we weren't blown away by the audio quality. It definitely had sharp high tones, but the mid-range was somewhat hit or miss, and the low end was non-existent. As a result, music seemed a bit thin, particularly if it had a percussive beat or bass of any nature. 
A further issue we had was with the battery life, which wasn't nearly as strong as advertised. The laptop was rated to get up to 9 hours of battery life on a single charge, but we easily found this to vary based on the load we put the system under. Under heavy load, we were lucky to get an hour and a half of life, while the lightest load for the machine managed to pull down 4 hours before needing a charge. Of course, this was also with the screen brightness set at 50% and the system set in balanced mode, but tweaking the power saver settings didn't really squeeze a significant amount of additional life out of the battery either. Finally, there were some hardware decisions that were made to keep costs low for the Inspiron 14, but it did limit the machine slightly. For instance, the system had a 5400 RPM hard drive included, which was obviously a decision made to save cash, but if you could pack in a 7200 RPM drive or a solid state drive, it'd be a lot faster, especially on boot ups. Also, if you're a gamer, you might not want to consider this particular configuration either. The computer can run games that are moderately intensive for graphics thanks to the HD Graphics 4400. Hardcore gamers are going to want to either upgrade to the optional GT 750M graphics card that Dell offers, or look at another machine entirely. Now these are two minor complaints, but they are notable nonetheless. The Dell Inspiron 14 is a beautifully designed system that's thinner than previous versions while also producing solid performance regardless of system load without the slightest amount of heat. Now, unfortunately, it's held back by some screen issues, as well as weak battery and sound performance, and some hardware choices that help to limit the strength of the system. However, these issues overlooked, you have a very capable machine on your hands that can suit the needs of many consumers on the market. For these reasons, we decided to give the Dell Inspiron 14 a 4 out of 5. For the latest coupons and deals on systems like the Dell Inspiron 14, be sure to check out techbargains.com slash Dell. To enter our monthly giveaway, make sure you always check out techbargains.com slash YouTube. And to watch our video unboxings, video reviews, and exclusive video features, be sure to go to techbargains.com slash videos.